Yo, what is up you guys? It's Grim here and welcome back to day six of the Redstone Academy. Last episode, we went over observers and pistons and how to effectively use them to make redstone way, way easier. I would definitely recommend going and checking that out in the link below because it goes over a lot of things that you can do with those two specific blocks that no other blocks can do. In this episode, we will be having a test day. Now, what that means is you will be tested on your knowledge of all the redstone components and stuff and everything like that that we have went over. There will be a use of uh, a couple of the redstone circuits that I did teach you. However, I did try to keep the circuits as out of this as possible so we could keep it as simple as possible. And one last thing, a lot of these are not very practical uh only a couple of them are but uh they will definitely help you in learning but more of the practical things will be done in phase two's test when we actually learn all the circuits and uh basically all the stuff that you really need to make a fully functional redstone circuit now this is just a friendly reminder as usual the link to the world is in the description of the respective video meaning that day one will be in day one and day two's world will be in day two and so on one last thing this series is also based on the bedrock edition of minecraft and results may vary between versions now this is the only time i will intervene on this statement during test day there are a couple of things that will act different on bedrock edition versus java one is that i'm fairly sure you cannot place redstone dust on java uh i meant pistons i don't think that you can place redstone dust on pistons on java edition uh java players help me out down below i'm pretty sure that that is the case as well as there's a couple other different quirkiness as far as timings go but the concepts should remain the same and now with all that being said i know it's a lot in the beginning of this episode let's just go ahead and get right into it all right you guys so in front of me here we have just a couple of little basic redstone contraptions now a couple of them you have seen before a couple of them uh they, they will surprise you a little bit but i didn't want to put too many in because trust me when i say if you actually thoroughly go through this pause the video and genuinely try this will take you maybe a good hour or 30 minutes an hour based on your wrestle knowledge to actually get through this video especially on the last contraption that i'm going to challenge you to build now i will say if you have not watched the past five episodes of the academy and you have no idea what you're doing and you're just watching this video for fun do yourself a favor and click out of it because if you watch this video and spoil the answers that's it you cannot just magically rewire your brain to forget all this it will always have some knowledge and you will not actually have to pull things from your brain and actually think really hard about this when you actually have a basic concept of what's going on so basically until you are ready to actually take the test do not watch this video or else the answers will get spoiled all right so i swear i'm done talking let's go ahead and get right into it day six test day so right here we have a familiar design it's a simple little piston door but with a catch so what i want you to do today is make a piston door that actually locks from the inside with a pull of a letter now this is what i mean when i go to walk through it will obviously open up and shut and then when I go to do that the same the other direction, you know, it'll open up and shut. However, let's say I'm running away from someone and it's a PvP and I flick this lever. They cannot get in no matter what on either side if I step on the pressure plates. And if I step on this, I'm flick it so you guys know that I'm not cheating or anything. This genuinely is a master switch. So I challenge you to go ahead and try and make this piston door. Pause the video. Really think about it. Okay. Go back into like all the previous episodes and just think, what do you use? A to make a piston door start with that and then b how are you going to lock the piston door whether it is open or closed that is why i challenge you pause the video see you in a second all right you guys so this is how this thing works if we go ahead and break down in here and go ahead and uncover all the redstone again it is as simple as this uh this is a little bit of some clunky redstone i will say not my most compact but it it works okay so basically um when this right here is off right it's going to not be part of the comparators the comparators aren't going to be comparing any signals meaning that uh if you step on the redstone obviously is going to power and power the doors and open them uh yada 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 and for those of you guys that forgot how a piston door works it's as simple as this little circuit just powering this block which is going to invert the torch allowing them to retract and then when you obviously step off everything's going to go back to normal and they're going to push out again basically i i might be repeating myself here i honestly don't know i've been rambling on so much but what is going on is when you step on this obviously everything's going to work but if you go ahead and lock it right here you're going to have a stronger input going into the side of the comparator which is not going to allow input to flow through the back of the comparator which is going to negate any kind of signal that you do when you actually step on the pressure plate trying to open the door all right you guys now this next one is actually a little bit of a familiar one if you did watch the observer video you'll remember 
build an auto retracting water dispenser which is basically when you press a button it's going to dispense and then take the water back now this one is a little different because before the dispenser was in the wall like this now i challenge you to make one flat and try and make it as flat with the ground as possible without having to protrude upwards so try to keep it as low to the ground as possible and think what do you need to actually detect the redstone turning on and off i challenge you to make this and it will see you in a second so basically guys what is going on here is you have a button right here which will then power a piece of redstone right here allowing an observer down here to see that it's powered which is going to send a little tick pulse up here which will then allow for some water to come out and then when it turns off the observer is obviously going to detect the redstone turning off which is going to send out another little tick which is going to power the dispenser allowing it to retract its water all right you guys now this next one is a very basic one but i want to make sure that you understand what is actually going on here and that is going to be make a rapid burst dispenser now this is what i meant in the beginning when i was rambling on so long saying some of these are impractical but it's more or less to teach you and give you the correct concept of you know pushing you in the right direction on redstone so what's going on here is you press a button and it's going to burst out three four five six somewhere around their diamonds uh, it doesn't need to be consistent or anything like that all that you want to do is make it to where when you press a button a couple of diamonds will get bursted out now before you actually go in and build this one uh what you need to think is what kind of circuit do you need to have a repeating pulse when you press a button go ahead and just try this out and i'll see you in a second Alrighty guys, so how this actually works is it is not a comparator clock, but instead it is a redstone clock powered by observers. Now for those of you that do not know, when you put two observer faces into each other, they will make a repeating clock. So what I did here was hook it up to a sticky piston. This is actually my favorite clock to use in so many builds. Uh, people say that all the time. It's the observer clock. This is my favorite one because it's so mobile. It's so you can, you can use it in a lot of different places and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So basically you just press a button and it'll push them together and it'll dispense uh, a couple of diamonds for as long as they're together. Now, obviously what you can do to extend this pulse instead of putting in an entire pulse extender. So as you can see here, we're getting like average four to five diamonds. If you put a wooden button in you can get more than five diamonds it, it's probably going to be around five to six diamonds each time so yeah i mean uh buttons obviously different kind of buttons will give you different amounts of pulse uh if you guys did not know that that's just a little fun fact right there wooden buttons are a little longer than uh stone buttons stone give 10 ticks i believe and wouldn't give 15 correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments below please all right you guys up next we have a simple little design that i think is pretty neat it's just make a single tick little pulse for this light now you can do this in many ways but you need to remember how to do it correctly so what you do is you just press a button and obviously as you can see there the uh light is going to turn off before the button actually goes ahead and comes back up now just to give a little bit of a better frame of reference i will use an actual lever meaning that this is literally a one tick pulse no matter what whether you're trying to power it uh forever or not and uh, obviously when you are unpowering it you do not have a falling edge monostable circuit meaning that the light is not going to light up a second time and if you guys are very unfamiliar with rising and falling edge i will give you a brief rundown because that is going to be one of the first things that we are going to be getting into a rising edge monostable circuit is basically this you press it and it is going to go ahead and power it uh one one little tick pulse when you actually press a button or a lever and then a falling edge is when it is unpowering meaning that if i were to unpower the lever and it was to actually go ahead and power the lamp again that would be a falling edge monostable circuit because it is on the side of the circuit that the redstone is becoming unpowered versus the powering side i hope that made sense i actually think that i genuinely explained that one pretty well so let's not get too sidetracked this is my challenge i challenge you to make a little one tick pulse generator and just a little tip to remember is think about what can you use as far as mobile blocks to maybe achieve this what can you use as far as blocks that can get locked or blocks that can turn off that's all that you need to think about and i challenge you to build this i will see you in a second Alrighty guys so how this thing actually works is if you come back here we just have a simple little comparator uh comparer i don't know what you say but basically uh this repeater is going to instantly power this uh comparator right here and is going to wrap around the rest of the line and this 
uh, redstone repeater is going to be one tick behind that is going to come in and turn off the redstone comparator as soon as it turns on giving a little one tick pulse i will go ahead and give a demonstration here for those of you that forgot as you can see there it is really quite instant Alrighty guys up next and i went ahead and changed this up a little bit so that you guys could not cheat make your own design for a micro wheat carrot and potato farm now uh it doesn't need to be small okay just make a design that works okay now this is definitely my favorite design it's uh probably uh, it's a close runner up to my two-in-one cow and chicken farm as far as my favorite and most proud farm because this thing is absolutely tiny when you compare it to a lot of other java edition micro carrot and potato and you know whatever farms so i challenge you to actually go on to make one you can use uh, the observer clock i just ask that you do not copy this design in any way shape or form i know that uh it is kind of hard to come up with one when you got one right here that you're like oh my gosh well this works so well uh just really try and think outside the box and honestly uh if you think that you made one really good go ahead and join the discord server and send it there and maybe i can do a video on it and i will give you full credits for it so i challenge you to make a micro wheat carrot and potato farm and just one thing to remember is that you need to harvest the crop by actually moving the piston back and forth you need to have at least three dispensers minimum firing at the same exact time and you need to have a clock system and that is it that is all that you need for an actual little farm so now i challenge you to go ahead and make that Alrighty, guys so how this thing actually works uh for those of you that well basically didn't watch my tutorial on it up uh, it's just two observer faces looking into each other as i said it's my favorite little clock from over there and it's going to power this dispenser which is going to power this rest online okay and these dispensers are actually solid blocks which is uh, i mean i it, it's kind of funny to me but whatever so the dispensers are solid blocks meaning that this observer will actually pass through powering this redstone which will then go ahead and power this block soft power this block which will then automatically go ahead and activate this piston every time it goes off thus giving you a little bit of a redstone clock as you can see right there now i'm sorry i cannot review every single design but i would love to look at them if you went on the discord server and shared it there i'd love to review it and tell you ways that you can go ahead and improve it but other than that let's go ahead and get on to the next design all right you guys now for the last design i challenge you this one will rack your brain a little bit trust me to make a flush two by two piston door now uh this design isn't actually in mine i forgot where i found it uh i found it a long time ago it might have been skippy six gaming i'm not sure but uh either way this is one that i usually use a lot unless i want to have blocks on both sides because if if you want to put blocks on both sides of this design it actually will not retract and go up and down so i actually made my own design which allows for me to use all the blocks that i want so uh that's why i do have a much bigger door on the channel but this one is absolutely tiny and how it works is you just flick a lever and it opens up you flick it again and it shuts now there are a couple of ways that i will actually demonstrate for you to go ahead and set you up so that you are not racking your brain when you actually try and build this oh yeah and just because i said this was by scooby six gaming that does not mean go and look his tutorial up on this that means that you need to still try and find this out for yourself okay all right so there you go this is a, a basic design so i'm going to use some levers to actually show you how this works all right so i found out the secret cheat code so you're going to have these pistons extend and then what you're going to want to do is have these pistons extend at the the same time if you run a rest online i think that sends both pistons i'm not sure uh because i did not use this design because this design is a bit old however if you really want to challenge yourself try and make it like this now the other design is obviously as you can see over there now you can either go with uh two pistons or one piston by the way all that you need to do is have four sticky uh for slime blocks on top like that that's all that you need to know and you will need uh some pulse layers in this as well as pulse ext i'm not sure if you need pulse layers but you definitely need a pulse extender uh unless you can find out the secret code which it's actually really simple but trust me when i say if you don't look this up and you actually do attempt this it will make you much better at rest zone and it will take you about an hour so now with all that being said go ahead and try and make this i hope that i didn't confuse you too much with these two but i would recommend going with this design right here with whether it's just one sticky piston or obviously you know you can have two sticky pistons like this and then this and then you want to make a extender down but don't get too caught up in it this thing is way more simple than you think all right you guys now i'm not going to go ahead and show this i'm just going to make sure 
if you did not build it, this is your last chance to go and try it again, okay? I will say that uh, you do get this feeling of satisfaction once you make it. It doesn't need to be compact in any way, shape, or form. I mean, heck, you've seen some of my builds. These things are absolutely massive. So, I challenge you, okay, if you are the person that has skipped over this one, go back, try and build it. You know, just honestly, just don't even finish this video. Like, just come back to it tomorrow or something. Try and build this. It will make you so much better at wrestling. Trust me. All right, so basically, though, how this works, as you can see, it goes up and down. And if we just go on and break right down here, the redstone is simple. You're going to be bashing your head against the wall if you did make it way more complicated than this. But this is all that is. Two pieces of redstone dust, two sticky pistons, two slime blocks, another piece of redstone dust, and a torch. So basically, what is going on here if I go ahead and turn this off? So as you can see here, this is redstone. This redstone is powered. Inverting the torch, which is going to obviously not allow this to get powered. However... What is going on is when this does get powered, it is going to come over here and power this block, which is going to shoot this piston up. And then this uh, torch right here is then going to power this piston once it gets like this piston down here is going to get pulled up because of the slime blocks. So once this piston gets pulled up, that will then get powered adjacently next to the rest on torch, which will then push that up too. So if I can go ahead and press a can I, can I do it from over here? Hold on. All right, so I'm going to try and commentate as best as possible. Hopefully that made sense, but as you can see here, flick it, that gets powered first. This comes on, this will then activate the piston, allowing it to push up even farther. And then, because uh, like I was saying, with uh, falling of circuits, this is not a falling of circuit. However, this is a pulse delayer extender sort of thing. Uh, the sticky piston is going to wait just a second, like the sticky piston over there, because this repeater right here is set to three ticks which is a little bit of a delay meaning that this piston right here has a second to retract and then this piston back here can go ahead and finalize the retract as you can see right there it goes ahead and finalizes it because it is just a tiny bit slower but at the same time it will push up first because this has no way of powering this until it's actually moved up there will be a link in the description below to download this world i would highly recommend doing it this is phase one completed i'd recommend getting a copy of this world onto your world or your minecraft or whatever somehow and just look at this stuff and study all of it because trust me this stuff is so so useful all right you guys and with all that being said i forgot to record the first time that i did this outro so let's go part two all right you guys and with all that being said i really hope that you guys did enjoy this video of me rambling on on just a couple different contraptions now i know that i did talk a lot in this video and believe me i'm going to be rambling on the end here so if you just want to save yourself the time and click off do that otherwise if you find my talking interesting for some reason go ahead and stay on and stick around so i i was talking a lot in this video more, more or less for the fact of i didn't want to overload you with too many redstone designs right because too many then you start to think oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm never gonna learn this but i went ahead and just put a couple on here and i thought that i would thoroughly explain thoroughly give like hints and stuff and like try and help you out in building these versus just giving you a ton of different contraptions and, like just saying build it and then showing you and then saying build it and showing you i wanted to actually teach you now with that being said if you did manage to build four five or even six out of six of these that is something to be very proud of because some of these were way really challenging some of them were a little easier but at the same time if you came from a person or like if you are a person that does not know anything about redstone that is something to be very proud of if you actually built some of these things without me actually showing you how they work like literally be proud of it even if they're not the most compact things in the world because that's a start and that's what a lot of people don't get is that redstone just takes time to understand and once you understand it then it starts to get really fun and you can make a lot of fun things but now this is the official outro so with all that being said as you guys know i do put a lot and a lot of effort into the redstone academy videos because i do want to educate people on redstone and just make it way less complicated than it actually seems because redstone is so much simpler than it actually is We'll say there are some really complicated things like walking houses, uh, mumble jumbo, but uh, that's besides the point. So now this is the official, official outro. With all that being said, if you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe and maybe check out the rest of my content. But with all that being said, I've been Grim and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.